Hello, we're back and we're going to continue our talk about cows, milk and farms. Our book today is called Milk from Cow to Carton. Do you love a nice cold glass of milk? Did you ever wonder how it gets from the cow's tummy to the shelf in the grocery store to your cup on the table? Well, we're going to find a little bit more about that today. There's a kitty licking up some milk. And every night my daughter puts a little saucer of milk out for our kitty. She likes to spoil her. And our cat meows at nighttime if she doesn't get that glass of milk. Well, in the warm spring and summer, cows graze high in the mountains. They graze in valleys, in fields, in meadows. They eat and eat in good green pastures. So grazing means eating in the fields and the pastures, eating the grass. Nearby, a farmer and his helpers cut grass. They dry it in the sun. And what are they making? when they cut the long grass and let it dry in the sun, they are making hay for the cold winter days. So in the summer, the cows can just graze in the pasture and eat the grass. But in the winter, when it's cold, they have to stay inside the barn. So that's when the farmer uses that dried grass called hay that he's cut down in the fall and in the summer. In the winter, a cow stays in the barn, snug and warm, and she eats the hay. Good summer grass and good winter hay are healthy food for a cow. The better a cow eats, the better the milk that she will give. So if she has healthy food, then she gives good healthy milk. And there's the cows inside the barn eating their yummy hay or the dried grass, keeping warm. When a cow eats, she tears the grass off with her tongue and her teeth. She swallows her food very quickly and she doesn't chew it well. Now, for us to eat that way, our parents would say, slow down, you're going to choke. And that's not very polite to eat so fast. You need to slow down, chew your food and digest it well. Well, that's not what cows do. They eat it really quickly and don't chew it. They just swallow it. The food is stored in the first or second of her four stomachs. Cows have four stomachs. So the first stomach and the second stomach are where they store the food that they swallow really quickly without chewing it. That's right, the cow has four stomachs. Later, when a cow is finished eating, she lies down quietly and chews her food again. So, she swallows it very quickly without chewing it, and she actually brings it back up again, and then chews it again. And that's called chewing her cud after she swallowed it and brings it back up again. Now, if you did that at your kitchen table, would you get in trouble for swallowing your food and then bringing it back up again? Well, probably, but not cows. They're made to do that because they have four stomachs. So, this time she chews up her cud a little bit at a time and doesn't eat it so quickly. It looks like she's chewing gum. And then she swallows it for the third time. There's the cow laying down, nice and calm, chewing her cud. After a cow swallows all of her cud, Stomachs number three and four start working. Remember, one and two are for storing the food. Then she brings it back up again, and this time it goes into stomach four and stomach five, where it gets digested. Now, what does digestion mean, do you know? It means to break your food down into smaller pieces. After it's been chewed and swallowed, then there's gases inside your stomach. They're called digestive gases. And they're acid, actually. 
and they break down that food even more into smaller bits that your body can use or the cow's body can use for nutrition or energy. And in the cow's case, part of the food is used for her own nourishment or energy and part of that broken down digested food is used to make milk. So there's the cow with her four stomachs. It goes in her mouth, it's stored, brought back up again, and it moves along the four different stomachs until what comes out in her udder through her teats is the milk that the farmer milks and the, the mummy cow gives to her baby. The farmer gets the milk from the mummy cows that aren't giving it to babies to sell to the grocery store. So those four stomachs have names. The four stomachs names are, number one is the rumen, number two is the reticulum, number three is the omasum, and the fourth stomach is the abomasum. I'll say those again, those are funny names. Stomachs number one and two, where the, the cow stores the food the first time, is called rumen and reticulum. Stomachs number three and four, where the food is digested or broken down into smaller pieces, is called omasum and abomasum. And maybe when you're studying with your mom and, and dad or whoever you're studying with, you can look up those stomachs, what they do and what their names are. A cow begins to make milk when she has a calf. So remember, the mummy cow needs to feed her baby and her udder gets filled up with milk and the baby sucks on the teats to get that milk out so that she, the baby can grow and become strong. A cow has milk even after her calf needs it. Once the calf starts eating grass, then the baby does not need her mom's milk anymore and the milk can be for us. Cows produce lots of milk. A healthy, happy cow can give us 30 quarts of milk a day. So that's way more than her baby needs. And she still needs to be milked or else her udder would explode and she would become very uncomfortable. So we get to um, benefit from that and we get to drink that extra milk. So there's some children on the farm playing in the fields. Here's the mummy cow and here's the baby sucking on the mummy's teeth and the, there's the udder, the big pink tummy where the milk is coming out of that looks like a balloon. And here's a monarch butterfly in the background. Beautiful nature. Last summer, my brother and I visited a farm high in the mountains. The dark, damp barn smelled of straw and cows. It smelled so much I had to hold my nose, but then I got used to it and I liked the smell. So if you grew up in the country, you might be used to the smell of a farm, like I did, and I love the smell of farm and fresh hay and cows. But if you're not used to that smell, at first it might smell a little funny to you, but once you've been around barns and, and farms and in the country, you'll start to love that smell. I call it the farm fresh smell. It's milking time and my brother and I get to watch the cows being milked. There's a little boy and a little girl here who are visiting the farm. They're about to see the farmer milk his cows. The farmer milks the cows twice a day, that means two times every day, in the early morning and the late afternoon. And that way, the cow's udders get to be empty and the cow is comfortable and the farmer gets to have milk to sell and to feed his family. Milk is made and stored in the cow's udder. The udder is a bag with four teats. By milking time, the udder is very full. When a teat is squeezed, the milk flows out 
And you can see the farmer here is squeezing the teats of the cow's udder and the milk is flowing out into the pail. Well, if you just had one dairy cow, you could collect the milk in a, pa a pail. But farmers usually have many cows on a big farm and they need a milking machine that attaches to all the different cow's udders with lots of pipes for the milk to flow into a great big metal container that collects the milk that a truck comes and picks up to take to the stores or to take to the plant where they um, get the, re the milk ready to be sold to the store. Well, before the farmer can milk the cow, he washes the cow's teats to make, their, make sure they're clean. Then he squeezes them. He squirted some milk into a cup for my brother and I, and we tasted it. The raw milk was warm and good. Then we watched the farmer milk his cows. He kept a record of how much milk each cow gave that day. Farmers with many cows use a machine to milk faster. And there's a picture of the milk machine with the tubes on it and the big metal container. The milk is pumped through tubes into a covered pail. Milking never hurts a cow. She feels comfortable after her udder has been emptied. Raw milk from the cows is stored in a refrigerated tank. And every day that milk is pumped into a big refrigerated tanker and taken to the dairy. So it goes from this metal pot to this metal box or container and then it goes from the metal tank into a tanker which is a big truck that's cool and the milk is taken to the plant where it gets it's um, put into containers to take to the store. So this is called a tanker truck and it's cool or refrigerated that carries the milk to the dairy. A dairy is where the raw milk is processed. In a dairy there are big tanks to store the milk. There are pipes for the milk to flow through. There are machines to homogenize and pasteurize the milk and machines to put it into bottles and cartons. A dairy is a very clean place. The floors and walls are spotless. The pipes, tanks, and machines are washed inside and out every day. You never have to hold your nose at a dairy. So here's the tanker truck that has picked the milk up from the farm, taken it to the dairy, and you can see in the dairy there's many different tanks that are doing different things to make the milk ready to put into the containers here at the bottom before it goes to the store. When the milk is brought to the dairy, a sample is tested right away. In the laboratory, the milk is checked for freshness, to see how fresh it is, and it's checked for how much butter fat it has in it. Butter fat is the cream that rises to the top of the milk. The creamier the milk is, the more the farmer is paid for it. So if his cows are fed really good food, really good hay, they make really creamy milk. And if the milk has lots of butter fat or cream in it, the farmer gets paid more money for that milk. If the milk passes the inspection, the processing begins. Most of the milk is homogenized in a machine. Now that's a big word. What does homogenized mean? Homogenized means it's made the same all the way through. The butter fat, instead of being on the top, is broken up into little pieces and stirred into all the rest of the milk. So all the milk has the same amount of fat all the way through it. It doesn't rise to the top anymore as cream. Homogenized whole milk is rich and creamy all the way through. Some people think it's too creamy. They can drink milk that's processed in other ways. Skimmed milk has all the cream taken out of it. So remember, homogenized milk has all the cream broken up into little pieces that's mixed throughout all of the milk. Skim milk has all the butter fat or all the cream taken out of it. Other milks have only some of the cream taken out of it. 
So 2% milk would still have 2% of the cream left in it. When the, milk, the cream is taken out of milk, it is packaged separately and sold as cream instead of milk to put in your coffee or to whip up to put on strawberries or desserts. Milk is heated then after it's been homogenized the milk is pasteurized. Now what does pasteurization mean? We found out what homogenization means. Now the milk has to be pasteurized. Well, there used to be a man, a scientist, whose name was Louis Pasteur. He was a French scientist. And he discovered that if you warm, heat milk up really quickly till it's almost boiling, it kills any of the germs that might be in the milk that could make you sick. Just like when we wash our hands with hot water, we get and we use soap, we get rid of any germs that might be on our hands. Well, Louis Pasteur, this French scientist figured out, oh, people can stay healthy when they drink milk. If we heat the milk up so that it's almost boiling, it kills all the germs that aren't good for people and they can drink that milk and they won't get sick and it will help to give them nutrition because milk can be very healthy for you. So pasteurization is when the milk is heated to get rid of any germs that might be in there. Well, after it's heated up really quickly, then it's cooled back down again really quickly. So that's pasteurization. Heat the mil milk up really quickly to kill germs and then cool it down again really quickly. And who discovered that pasteurization process? Yes, Louis Pasteur. Here's some people sitting at the table enjoying some nutritious milk. The ladies, and they're drinking different kinds of milk. The lady says, skimmed milk will make me skim. I mean, slim. So she's drinking the milk that doesn't have any fat in it because she doesn't want any extra fat. Cream milk will make me butter fat. I mean, plump. So this man here, he wants to get a little more meat on his bones. So he's drinking cream and the kitty here what do you think she wants either will make me lappy i mean happy <laughs> so they're all enjoying their milk different kinds well after the milk has been processed it's been tested for freshness it's been homogenized to mix the milk up into the rest of the milk or take it off and it's been pasteurized, heated up, and cooled down to get rid of any germs. Well, now it's been processed, it's ready to be poured into cartons and jars and milk bags. Each container is labeled with what kind of milk it has in it, whether it has homogenized milk, skim milk, 2% milk, whole milk, and sometimes we see them in different containers. Here's a carton. Here's a jar, here's a plastic container, and in our stores we see them in plastic bags. It says here, the little girl says, mine says pasteurized skimmed milk. The boy says, mine says vitamin D homogenized pasteurized milk. 400 units of vitamin D added to the milk. And the man says, I drink pasteurized, homogenized, fortified, low-fat milk, 2% butter fat, non-fat solids added by the gallon. So the different types of milk, depending on how much fat it is in the milk and what they've added to it. Other products are made from milk in a dairy too. Can you think of anything else that's made from milk? If you thought of sour cream, you're right. Buttermilk, butter, cottage cheese, yogurt, cream cheese, chocolate milk, regular cheese, and something we all enjoy this time of year, ice cream. Those things are all made from milk. Milk and dairy products contain proteins, 
contains vitamins and minerals such as calcium. And these vitamins and minerals and protein give you energy and make you strong. Especially calcium makes your bones strong. Most of the milk we drink comes from cows, but other mammals give milk too. Can you think of another mammal or another animal that gives milk? In some countries there aren't very many cows, so people drink the milk from goats and sheep. Cows, goats, and sheep, they all milk their babies from the udder and they all give milk to farmers. Farmers make cheese from these different milks too. You can have goat cheese, you can have cow cheese, you can have cheese made from sheep milk. And these people here are making some cheese and they're going to tell us how they make cheese. I'll read that to you. First I boil the milk, then I add rennet. Rennet makes the milk curdle or it makes the milk go chunky. Then when the milk goes chunky, the milk separates into curds and whey. Have you ever bought curds at the cheese factory? Curds are yummy. Well, when the milk curdles, the chunky part is the curds and the liquidy part is the whey. Little Miss Muffet sat in her tuffet drinking her curds and whey. Well, the whey is a liquid from the milk and the curds are the chunky part. So first it's milk that's heated up and boiled. Then rennet is added to it that makes the milk go chunky and turn into whey and curds. Cottage cheese is also a type of curd. I put the curds in a cloth bag and I hang it up to drain, to drain out the whey. We can eat the new cheese tonight, says this family here. And the little boy is saying, I can't wait to eat the new cheese. I put the other bag of cheese in salty water. Salty water is called brine. The salt will keep it fresh, the cheese, as it gets older and hardens. And then we can eat it next month. And again, the little boy says, I can't wait. So new cheese is like curds and old cheese is that hardened cheese that's been aged and left to dry. You can be a dairy farmer right in your kitchen. You can make your own butter. And do you know, I put a recipe for making butter in the package of work that I sent home. In the arts and crafts section, you look for it a recipe for making butter and maybe you can make that with your family. It's not too hard. You can make your own butter if you have some heavy cream, so the cream that's been separated from the milk, and you have a mixer. Put the cream in the bowl and start mixing it. So there's a little girl and little boy, they've got the cream in the bowl and they're mixing it. First, it will turn into whipped cream, and whipped cream is yummy too, especially on strawberries, which we are eating this time of year. But if you keep feeding it after it turns to whipped cream, eventually it starts to change and get harder and thicker and turn yellow, and that is when it changes to butter. The whipped cream will separate into butter fat, a ch chunks of, of yellow. and whey. You get rid of the whey or the liquid and the yellow chunks that you have letter left, you squish them together and that's butter. And there they are putting the butter that they've made on some crackers and some bread. It's strange. I know milk comes from cows and other animals that eat grass. But grass is green and milk is white. I wonder how this happens, don't you? So here's a little boy and little girl that have visited the farm and learned all about milk. 
and dairy products and now they're laying on the grass looking at the sky looking at the grass and they they are wondering why milk is white when grass is green and cows eat grass well what do you think i hope you've learned a lot about milk from this book and dairy products and why milk is good for you and about cows how many stomachs do they have right Four. Have a wonderful day and enjoy nature.